My name is Mindy Rose and I'm 51. I'm a physician, um, an anesthesiologist, so I've, I've obviously dealt and been around cancer and patients and ramifications and surgeries, etc. for most of my adult life. But um, the first time it hit me personally um, was when my mother was diagnosed with a very rare form of lung cancer. Um, it was called mesothelioma. When she was around 55, she started complaining of this strange like shoulder, neck, chest pain. I uh, went to every physician known to mankind, um, shoulder doctors, orthopedic surgeons, neurologists. Nobody could really figure out what it was. Um, they offered her epidurals and um, all kinds of pain management things, but nobody could figure it out. They kind of started writing her off as just this crazy lady who was complaining. Um, MRIs and, and CAT scans were not as sophisticated as they are now. Um, so finally, after about five years of this, she went to a new neurologist who said, you know, it's been five years you've been complaining about this. No one's done a CAT scan in a long time. And now we have these spiral CAT scans. Let's do this and take a look. So sure enough, they found um, several centimeter mass in her chest wall. And um, I'll never forget, I was actually, went to go skiing with my husband, got there and I had a flu. So I couldn't go. I was stuck home in the hotel and I remember she called me, she was going for the biopsy and I was sick as a dog and she's saying, I'm really nervous. They did the biopsy and it came back and they said it's either really treatable form of lung cancer, um, like alveolar or small, I can't remember what it was, or it's this weird thing called mesothelioma. And I was just kind of tired and not really feeling very supportive. I feel bad. I feel so bad now. I was like, Mom, there's no way it's mesothelioma. No one gets that. You know, you're not a... It's just call me later. And then the next day, um, they had to send it off. And sure enough, it was mesothelioma. We kind of went into like, okay, how do we... Mo, like, what do, How do we deal with this? It's very rare. We did some research and there's like... You're lucky to have an 18 month survival rate. The best was five years that anybody got. That was very rare. Kind of attacked it scientifically. We went, I went back home to LA. I was living in Arizona at the time. Um, we actually went to UCLA library and just started getting out every article we can find on treatment of mesothelioma because it was so rare. Um, and I still remember like going up and down. This is back before internet was that big, going in, up, up and down the library step ladders into like little lofts looking for these old microfiches to look up. And um, there's not a lot, there wasn't a lot. Eventually she actually was doing really well. Um, she'd already lived longer than the 18 months, it was amazing. And I was living in Arizona at the time. I was starting a family and it, I think she knew that it was gonna be limited. Uh, and she wanted to be close to me. So she and my stepdad moved out here. So she was here for the last year of her life. My mom and I were very close. We were best friends. But being that I'm the physician in the family, that was the hard part. It, they always, everybody looked to me and my mom looked to me and it was hard because I had to, I had to be the one to figure everything out and know everything. So it put a lot of pressure on me and I was terrified of making a mistake or I never, and, and also I, I don't think I ever really got to just, just be the daughter and just, I never, I could never let myself be scared. And when she got sick at the end, it was such a surprise to me. Like I was just handling it like a scientist. I was like, well, we're going to do this and then we're going to do that, you know, A, B, C, D, and then she'll be fine. Even though I knew all the facts said that people don't live past five years, I just, I never accepted that. I just thought we, we do this. And my mom had such an amazing attitude. She was a very strong woman. Um, she just was always a beat, happy person. Um, and she'd had a hard life, struggles, and worked her whole life, and a lot of losses. And But she, she always, she just really had a good attitude. And I thought her attitude and my help would, we'd beat the odds, but you know, it is cancer. She never let on to me how true, I mean, when she said she was in 10 out of 10 pain at the end, I never knew. I mean, you know, she felt weak and nauseous and tired. Um, 
pain, pain? I didn't know. So no, I mean, I, I, I can't remember back, but I, I do know that at the very end, as soon as we knew she was that miserable, we went, jumped right to the, the pain pump. We weren't going to mess with a bunch of pills and patches at that point. Why? I mean, why not? I, I don't understand. I see patients wait way too long to get, to get a more efficient mode of pain management. And I think, I think physicians wait too long to send them or to recommend it. I don't know why.